Penny Kidd with Pennywise Coaching. I'm here today as a part of Faith on Friday Extra to share with you a little bit about my story around money and why I do what I do today. So my story began about 15 years ago when a friend of mine at work as a social worker for child protection came to me and asked for help around her money because she felt like I was really good because I would talk about my things being in Quicken and really balanced and the truth was that I didn't really have a plan for my money, I just knew how to track it. So in sitting down and helping her with her money, realized that she had about $40,000 worth of debt. And most of the questions I asked had the answer of, I don't know, like how much do you owe and how much do you pay for this? So I decided at that point that we should be accountability buddies because after that night of me going home and looking at my Quicken, I realized that I had about $28,000 worth of debt and I wasn't really any better off than she is. So we were gonna be accountability buddies and we were gonna start this plan together, read a book and try to improve our finances. And unfortunately we met two times and then my friend was hit and killed by a drunk driver. It just rocked my world because not only was she gone, her husband was in the car and he suffered a traumatic brain injury. And so they had four kids left behind, one and three and 15 and 16 I think all of whom were devastated because of the, the damage that was done to their family. So it made me go home to my husband and say, we need to get our finances in order. We need to make things different for our kids because you never know when your last day is, right? So we started slowly but surely. I started kind of getting our finances in order and trying to take the course at our church and then realized that it really was gonna take two of us to do it. So it was a slow go to start but once we finally learned how to budget, we were able to pay off not only that $28,000, but then we went on and paid our house off almost six years ago, or over six years ago, and have since put two kids through college without any student loans. So along that way, people started asking me, how'd you do that? Who, who has a paid for house before they're 50? And um, it, it dawned on me that it's really about more about your behavior than it is about math. So I use a lot of counseling and mediation skills in helping my clients who are ready to improve their finances in a much faster way than I did. So along that way, pretty about the time we were about to pay off our house, my mother informed me that she found out from her CPA that she could run out of money at the rate she was pulling it out. And I did a little quick math and realized she had about 15 months worth of money left at the rate that she was pulling and it had never dawned on me that that would be a possibility, that that could happen to somebody. Um, my parents were very frugal. We were raised fairly poor and um, they knew how to stretch a dime. However, they were never really looking at the possibility of how long will their savings last and could we outlive it. So I had to step up and help my mom try to get her finances in order and um, reduce her debt and she, she didn't have a ton but she also and she had a paid for house so she thought she'd be fine she had a long-term care policy well what I realized was that that long-term care policy wasn't going to do her any good with without the ability to pay the first 90-day deductible that she had so it was quite stressful and unfortunately or fortunately my mother passed away just before she ran out of money because nobody really stops and thinks about that. Like the possibility of your parents having no money and then all they have to live on is social security, which for my mom was only about $1,200 a month. So even with a paid for house, you have taxes, you have insurance, you have food on the table, you have doctor bills. I felt like all of her money from her IRA was going to the doctors to pay for things. And it really then motivated me, motivated me again to get my own finances in order so that I don't have to put my kids in that situation. Along that way, I started helping other people learn how to budget and learn how to be very intentional with their money and to be thoughtful about what are we doing and in what order and are these things that we're spending our money on aligning with our goals and our values of what we say is important to us the independence that we have and the things that we want to achieve in our life and and look back on with fondness and you know is all the stuff that we like to accumulate really helping us achieve that so I started a coaching practice about six years ago and help people 
one-on-one -on -one or as couples get their money in shape so that they can quit paying so much in interest and instead turn around and be able to start saving for themselves and be really mindful about not only how they pay down debt, but also what are they gonna do um, to make more or, or save more. So it's been a really interesting journey to me and one of the, well there's three things that I think that you could really do to help improve your finances today. First of all, you have to be aware. You have to know your situation. How much debt do you have? How much interest are you paying? What is it really costing you to carry that debt? And what are the things costing you that you're putting onto credit cards if you're still using credit cards? Then the second thing is to be very intentional with your money. Instead of just kind of going through life and doing whatever feels good and buying whatever moves you at that moment, you need to be looking at all things and how they play out together and, you know, is interest really working in your favor or against you? It could be a penalty when you're paying out on a credit card and it can be a bonus when you're investing it in something that's growing. So really be intentional with your money. The third thing that I suggest to people is to be consistent. You, once you learn how to do a budget, you have to do it over and over again for the rest of your life. I help people create systems that are sustainable, that don't take so long, and also realizing that a budget is a living document. It's gotta change with you and with your circumstances from sometimes paycheck to paycheck, let alone month to month. So it's not a one-time event that you go create a budget once and then you're done. So I hope those are helpful tips to you and that you will look seriously at your own finances and your family and kind of decide what do you want and what are your values and how are you making those line up. If you happen to need some help around that, I'm available to you and I would love to offer you a free strategy or discovery session. If you wanna reach out to me at my website, which is www.pennywisecoaching.com and click on the button that you wanna contact me, I'll send you the link to my calendar so that you can pick a time that works for us both to have a 45 minute conversation about your situation and a little bit more about what coaching does and whether it's a good fit for you or if I have any advice for you right off the bat. If that's not something that you're interested in, you can always join my email list as well from my website and follow along getting a newsletter once a month or twice a month so that you get some tips. You can also follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. So Ricky's gonna put all that information down below but I'm really accessible and I hope that you will reach out to me if you're struggling with your money or if you know somebody else who is, please share this video with them and let them know that myself or other coaches out there are here to help you really up your game in a much faster way. So I appreciate the opportunity with Faith on Friday Extra today to share my story and hope that it inspires you to get your finances in a better place and become one of my wise guys. That's a term that I use that I lovingly call the people that are part of my tribe, that we're all trying to be wise together. And I hope that's something that's in your future. Be wise.